So, this week's Dynamite kicked off with CM Punk coming out to be the special guest commentator for the show, and Punk came out to a huge ovation from the crowd, and it transitioned beautifully into the next person coming out, Adam Cole, baby. And the crowd was hot for Adam Cole tonight. Like, they were giving some of the best and loudest chants I've ever seen for Adam Cole. Everything from the boom to the Adam Cole, baby, during his entrance, it was just so great. He hasn't even had his match yet and he's already probably the most popular wrestler in AEW. And then Frankie Kazarian came out and Adam Cole had his debut match in AEW. And this was just a great match. I don't think anybody expected anything else out of Adam Cole. But in the end, Cole caught Frankie Kazarian with the Panama Sunrise and transitioned into the last shot, which I guess he can't really call it the last shot anymore. It's probably more just going to be referred to as a running knee or a shining wizard to the back of the head. Or maybe you can get around it by using a word that's synonymous with last, like final. So you can call it the final shot. I don't know, just some ideas. And then Cole grabbed a microphone and challenged Christian Cage, Luchasaurus, and Jungle Boy to a six-man tag team match against him and the Young Bucks next week at Rampage Grand Slam. So the super click is back. That's pretty fucking cool. And then next, we had two title matches made for Rampage, which were the tag team champions, the Lucha Brothers, facing off against the Butcher and the Blade, and the TNT champion, Miro, facing off against Fuego Del Sol, with the stipulation that Fuego was putting his car on the line. And then MJF came to the ring with Wardlow, and MJF did another killer heel promo, where he disparaged Brian Pillman Jr.'s family, this time targeting Brian Pillman to hype up their match next week on Dynamite, and instead of looking up and talking to him, he looked down towards the ground and talked to him, which I thought was a beautiful touch. And then MJF was interrupted by Brian Pillman Jr., and Pillman surprised MJF by coming in from behind him with a steel chair and MJF retreated. And then earlier in the day, we saw an interview with Jim Ross and Brian Pillman Jr., where they hyped up the match against MJF next week. And then Alex Marvez was backstage with Christian Cage and Jurassic Express. Express, and Christian delivered a great jab towards WWE when he said that since Adam was already used to losing the Wednesday Night Wars, they'll just add Friday to that as well. And then we had a tag team match with Dante Martin and Matt Seidel facing off against FTR. And at the end of the day, Dante once again ate the pin by taking the big rig from FTR, which makes me think that even though he is really popular and Punk even hyped him up on commentary, they're not really Really giving him the push that I think he deserves because if he just keeps losing they're not doing any favors for him or raising his stock in any way and then Lance Archer and Minoru Suzuki were backstage and they challenged Moxley and Eddie Kingston to a match at Arthur Ashe Stadium and then Malachi Black made his entrance and called out Claire Temple because she was wearing a Nightmare Factory jacket in the front row and when Black came out of the ring to confront her Cody Rhodes came down to save her and they began and brawling throughout the arena and eventually brawled out of it. And they also teased that they'll potentially fight next week at Arthur Ashe Stadium. And then Alex Marvez was backstage with Anna Jay and the Dark Order and things continued to heat up within the group. And then in the ring, American top teams Dan Lambert and the men of the year Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page challenged AEW to respond to their challenge of having somebody step up to them. And Chris Jericho and Jake Hager answered the call and Lambert said that if they were going to fight it was going to be next week in the Big Apple and then Jade Cargill faced off against Layla Hirsch and Jade continued her undefeated streak by laying Layla out with her jaded finisher so even though Layla put up an extremely impressive performance Jade Cargill continued her hot streak and I imagine she's probably going to be challenging for the AEW Women's World title soon and then Taz and Hook confronted CM Punk at the announcer's table and Taz asked Punk if he was trying to take his job which I thought was kind of funny but as Punk stepped up to Taz and his son Hook Will Hobbs attacked Punk from behind and choke slammed him onto the broadcast table which unfortunately did not break but I mean I guess it could have been worse I mean you could have missed the table altogether and tilted his pelvis and then Darby Allen took on Sean Spears and in what was a great heel move from Sean Spears he grabbed a towel and wiped the face 
Pain off of Darby, and he also locked Darby into a Scorpion Deathlock right in front of Sting. And in the end, Spears was going for a C4 on the ring steps, but Darby countered and then sent himself off the top rope and hit the coffin drop on Spears to get the win. And then after the match, Spears' Pinnacle members, FTR, came to the ring and began brawling with Darby and Sting. And they started teasing Tully Blanchard's match with Sting when Tully hit Sting from behind with a steel chair. And when Sting tried to retaliate, FTR just blindsided Sting and hit him with a spiked pile driver. And then Tully Tully Blanchard, much like his protege Sean Spears, wiped off Sting's face paint. And then Tony Giovanni was in the ring and interviewed American Dragon Brian Danielson about Kenny Omega. But before Danielson could say much, Don Callis interrupted him and came out with Kenny Omega. And Don Callis berated Danielson. But Danielson said that this was not about the world title. This was just about having a match between the two to see who was better. And Kenny Omega said that he accepted his challenge. So next week, it's going to be AEW World Champion Kenny Omega against American Dragon Brian Danielson on Dynamite, which is honestly just one of those dream matches that people have been talking about for years. And then we had our main event, which was Eddie Kingston and John Moxley versus 2.0. And 2.0 with Daniel Garcia tried to jump Moxley before the bell. So Moxley started off the match in a bad way. But after a lariat bought Moxley some breathing room, he made the hot tag to Eddie Kingston and Eddie just started going ham on the opposing team. And finally, Eddie and Moxley hit Jeff Parker with the combination Exploder Suplex and a Lariat and Moxley Pin Parker for the win. And then Suzuki's music hit and they actually referenced the Suzuki incident, which I thought was fucking hilarious. I mean, that's such an AEW move to just play along with the trends in the internet wrestling community. But while Suzuki was entering the ring to face Moxley, Archer pulled Kingston out and they began brawling around the arena. And then Moxley and Suzuki reignited their battle from last week and started fighting on top of the timekeeper's table. So they've already started setting up for a monumental dynamite and rampage next week. So I'm really excited to see that. 